Hello, and welcome to the fourth of the Math 8 video series for Seattle Public Schools. Today is the last of the four videos, and we will be working on solving systems of linear equations. Thank you to Ms. Hugh from JAMS and Ms. Burke from the district office for helping me make these videos. What you'll need at home today are a paper or composition book to write on, a pen and pencil to write with, and your Pearson workbook, volume one or two, depending on which video you're watching today. And if you don't have that, you can go to pearsonrealize.com. Now, if you don't have any of these things and you just want to watch the video and learn along with us, that's fine. You can always go on to the SPS YouTube channel later and rewatch this video with something to write with. And taking notes is always helpful. For our do now today, we're going to take a look at a video I made of something I could estimate around my house. If you take a look at this watering can here, I want you to figure out what is the capacity of this water can? How much volume of water does this can hold? Take a look at the shape of it. There's a cylinder for the main can. There's this little spout at the end. If I start to pour, I can see the water's right up to the edge of that spout. If I place it here, comparing it to something you do know, I will tell you that in this cup, almost full to the brim, there's eight ounces or one cup of water. So if this blue cup holds one cup of water, how many cups do you think this watering can holds? So go ahead and think of a low limit of your range. It would be a reasonable estimate, a high limit of a reasonable estimate, and then come up with what you think would be a good estimate for the number of cups in that watering can. We will reveal the answer at the end of the video. Today we'll be learning topic five from Pearson, analyze and solve systems of linear equations. We'll be covering three different lessons. You can see in that topic overview, 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3 will be the topics I will be covering. After this video, you can go do practice problems from those sections. By the end of this video, I hope the lesson helps you understand these three learning targets. I can find the number of solutions of a system by inspecting the equations. I can find the solution to a system of equations using graphs, and I can solve systems of equations using substitution. This also supports some of the learning on the previous videos that we did on linear equations and proportional equations. So check out video three for support on those targets as well. Let's start with the definition of a system of equations. A system of equations is formed by two or more equations that use the same variables. So for example, in this video I'm about to show you, I have two equations that share the same variables, time and distance. I've instructed my daughter Nina to run at a constant rate from this start over here to this finish line over here. So she would have a linear equation because I told her to run at a constant rate. And I could write that linear equation that has two variables, time and distance. I also instructed my son Liam to walk at a constant rate. And he has the same two variables as Nina has, time and distance. So I could use those two equations that I could write to create a system of linear equations. Now I could graph that system. I could use substitution to solve that system. And I'm gonna show you in this video what the actions of running and walking look like. And then on the same slide, or on the next slide, sorry, we will graph those two equations that were created by their walking and running. And we will solve the system. And we'll talk about what that means to solve and what a solution means. So let's take a look at this video so that we can see the actions that create the equations and the graph on the next slide. Nina, go. So you can see Nina running at a constant rate, Liam walking at a constant rate, they have the same start and the same finish. That's how I can create a system using the variables time and distance. You will notice that Liam stuck his arm out there at a certain moment when Nina was passing him because he was not feeling happy about being told to walk when Nina got to run. 
but that's going to be part of what we're going to look at on the next slide. So let's take a look at three different moments in this video to understand how to solve a system of linear equations. So first moment I want you to notice over on the left hand side is Nina before the race starts and Liam at the start line. That's moment number one. That's actually not even going to show up on this graph and I'll explain why. Moment number two is where I really want you to focus. That is where Nina starts the race. She is at the start line and we're going to call that time zero. So on this graph, time is on the x axis and distance is on the y-axis. So what happens at time zero of this race is Nina has not run any distance, so she has a point right here. Her graph starts at zero time, zero distance. Now she's running at a constant rate, so she is going to run for four seconds and then she's going to hit that finish line. She runs pretty fast. So at four seconds, she hits the finish line, which is 36 feet from start to finish. So Nina has a straight line that represents her location the entire way along this race. So we can write an equation to represent Nina's distance and time. So Nina's distance, y, here's the y-axis, is always going to be equal to her rate or speed times x, which is the number of seconds she's been running, plus her starting value. If you want to review how to write a linear equation like this, go to video three on the SPS YouTube channel, and that'll help you with this concept. Now, her rate can be found by looking at the change between the two points we have on this graph that I'm looking at right here. We have a change in x, or time, of four seconds. So y equals we have change in y over change in x. Her change in x was four seconds. Her change in y or distance is 36 feet. So she runs at a rate of 36 feet per four seconds. And then if she multiplies that by how many seconds she's been running and adds her starting value, which she, we're saying after zero seconds, she's run zero feet, we can write an equation. Again, you can watch video three if you want more help with how to do that. Now, in order to make this a system, we need two linear equations. There's Nina's. Let's look at Liam's. Liam has a starting value here at zero seconds of Nina running. He has already made it 14.4 feet because he got a head start. Remember, this is not the zero we're talking about in this first picture. The zero is right here. For Nina's zero seconds, Liam has already run, or in this, sorry, walked. He wasn't happy about that, by the way. He walked 14.4 feet at Nina's zero seconds. So that's why his starting value is 14.4. So let's write that over here. His distance is gonna be his rate multiplied by the number of seconds he's been running, walking, plus his starting value, his y-intercept, is 14.4 feet. Now to find his rate, his m, his slope, we have to figure out how long it took him to run the race. It took him, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is counting by ones. So after six seconds, he had made it 36 feet. That was six seconds after Nina started the race, he had run 36 feet. So we can find his slope or his M value here. His change in distance, it's a little harder to figure out. 36 and 14.4, his change in distance would be 36 minus 14.4, which should be 21.6, 21.6 and his change in time was six seconds. So to finish his equation, we needed the same thing as Nina's equation, his rate and his starting value. Now, I can tell right now that they have different rates or speeds by just looking at that M value. We'll circle that in green. Liam runs 21.6 feet in six seconds, 
and Nina runs 36 feet in four seconds. But to make it easier to compare these, let's simplify both rates. Y equals 36 divided by four is nine, so nine feet per second. And Liam's is 21.6 divided by six is 3.6, sorry, 3.6 feet per second. So I can look at my system right now and notice that Nina's rate is higher. So her line is steeper because she went running at nine feet per second. Liam's line is less steep. It is 3.6 feet per second. So notice that because their lines are both straight and they are at different slopes, they cross, they meet, they intersect. This is called the solution to this system. The solution is when they both have the same time and the same distance. And that only happens once. This system has one solution because there's only one point of intersection. I'm gonna label this the point of intersection on a graph. Now what makes this a little tough is that we have to kind of estimate what this point is because we don't have every single um, value labeled on my y-axis. We have 20 to 40. So that means that 20, 30 would be halfway in between. This would be 25. So we're counting by fives. So we're gonna do our best to estimate the system's solution based off what we see on that y-axis. So we're gonna come down here and say one second, two seconds, well, it's a little less than three. So I don't know, uh, 2.7, 2.8, it's kind of hard to tell. So let's just say this point here is somewhere around 2.8 seconds is when they met, or Nina passed Liam at that moment. That's this moment right here. Nina and Liam are at the same distance at the time 2.8 seconds. And what is that distance? Well, we can look here. It's approximately 24 maybe, ish. So this solution means that at 2.8 seconds, they both had run 24 feet. And it was the only time that they had run the same distance at the same time. There was only one solution. Now there are situations that have not just one solution to a system. So think about that for a second. What would have to be true in this story for there not to be one solution? Could there have been no solution to the system? What would the story have to be for there to be no solution? Could there have been an infinite number of solutions? Think about for just a moment, what would I have to change in this story for there to be no solution and for there to be infinite solutions? Take about three seconds to think about that. So for there to be no solution, let's draw what that would have looked like. We'll draw a little graph on the side here. So here's going to be no solution and a little sketch of a graph here that has infinite solutions. What if Nina and Liam had both run. Now they've run a lot of races together. They're twins, so they often are racing each other. And they actually run about the same speed. Nine feet per second is about how fast they each run. So let's say Nina runs nine feet per second. And then I give Liam that head start still, and he runs at nine feet per second. What do you notice about those two lines? They're both straight lines. And they're never going to meet. There's no point of intersection because they have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. The y-intercept, the b value is different. Different y-intercepts. 
So if they had been running the same speed, same slope, but one had gotten a head start, different y-intercept, there'd be no solution to that system. Those two lines would never meet because they're straight lines. What about infinite solutions? Can you think of a situation that would create a system with infinite solutions? So what if Nina had been running at a constant rate, nine feet per second, and I had not given Liam a head start? Well, that would mean that Liam would also be running at nine feet per second, and he would have not had a head start, so he would have started also at zero seconds, zero feet. So I know it looks like I drew one line, but this is actually two different lines. The y-intercepts are the same. Same y-intercept, and the slopes are the same. Same slope. So it actually looks like one line, but it's really two lines that are exactly the same slope and y-intercept. Imagine the two of them running side by side, same speed, same starting time, infinite solutions, an infinite number of times that their distance is the same because they're running together. So three different situations exist. A system of linear equations with one solution because take a look. I'll do this in, let's see, light green. The slope for Nina was nine feet per second and the slope for Liam was 3.6 feet per second, different slopes. So therefore they have different steepness and their y-intercepts were different as well. That means there's going to be one solution. So for there to be one solution, that would mean that the slopes would be different and the y-intercepts would also be different. So different slope and in green, different y-intercept. So we're just going to do one more thing before the end of this video. We've already talked about all three situations that exist. System of linear equations with one solution, no solution, infinite solutions. But I'm going to show you a strategy for solving using substitution, using those equations. Let's take a look. So to hit our third learning target today, we have to talk about the last concept, which is substitution. Now we're going to take the same situation and we're going to use algebra to figure out what the solution was instead of just looking at the graph. Now we already know the solution to this system. We can see it right here. But if you don't graph this, you can't always see the solution. So let's take a look at the two equations and see what we can do with them. So equation number one, y equals 9x plus 0. There's Nina. Equation number two, y equals 3.6x plus 14.4. Well, if we want to find the solution, that's the place where the x value, time, and the y value, distance, is the same. So we're going to say, okay, well, when is y, this distance for Liam, equal to y, or this distance for Nina? So let's set this distance equal to this distance. So we've got 9x plus 0 equals the same distance as 3 0.6x plus 14.4. We've set the two equations equal to each other. Now we could do that because they both said y equals. Now if they didn't, we'd have to manipulate the equations a little bit first, but you'll see that in your practice problems, that if you can solve both equations for y or x, you can solve a system by setting them equal to each other. That's called the substitution we just did. We substituted this equation value of y into the other equations value for y. Now let's use algebra to solve. So we have 9x plus 0 on the left and 3.6x plus 14.4 on the right. Video number two in the SPS videos goes through solving equations, so if you need a refresher on that I recommend going back and watching that video, but I'm going to do this fairly quickly. So we have x's on both sides and we have constants on both sides. So I'm going to subtract 3.6x from this side of the equation. So I have to maintain equality by subtracting 3.6x from the other side. 
So 9x's take away 3.6x's is 5.4x plus 0 equals 14.4. That's because 3.6x minus 3.6x is 0. Now, in order to solve for x, I have to get x alone. Well, anything plus 0 doesn't change the value, so I'm just going to rewrite this. And I have to divide by 5.4 on both sides because I'm trying to get 1x. Whoops, I made a mistake there. It's a common mistake. We're not dividing by 5.4x, we're just dividing by 5.4. So 1x equals, I'm going to use a calculator to double check my math here, we've got 14.4 divided by 5.4, which is 2.6, 2.67. What that means is that this x value that we estimated earlier as 2.7, it's really 2.67 and then what's this y value? I can figure this out by using my x value to find my y value. Let's do that. 9x plus 0 equals the distance that Nina runs. So I'm going to say her distance equals 9x plus 0 so let's see how far she ran after 2.67 seconds. 2.67 plus 0. So her distance after 2.6 seconds would be 2.67 times 9 seconds, or 9 feet per second, is 24. Hey, look at that. This is 24. That's what we figured out on our graph. So we just use substitution. What we did right here is called substitution. It's a way of solving a system algebraically. And whatever solution you get solving it using substitution should be the same solution you get if you were to graph it. So those work hand in hand to help you find a solution to a system. Based on our learning targets today, there are three key concepts that we intended for you to learn by watching this video. First of all, just by looking at two equations, you can figure out if there's one solution. If the slopes are different, the lines will intersect. If there is no solution, that means that the slopes must be the same, parallel lines, but the y-intercepts must be different. And if a system has infinitely many solutions, it means that it's essentially the same equation twice. The slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same. Here's what those look like on a graph. Two lines with different slopes will intersect or intersect, sorry, at one point. I didn't draw that very well, I apologize. Good thing that I had the picture already there. Or no solution means the lines are parallel. Slopes are the same, y-intercepts are different. And on a graph, you might be wondering, well, it's not a system of linear equations, that's just one equation. Well, it's actually two. The lines are overlapped. They are intersecting at every point. And then near the end of the video, I showed you how to use algebra to do substitution to figure out the solution for a system. We solved one of the equations so that it was y equals form, y equals mx plus b, and then we solved the second equation. So it also said y equals, and then we set those equal to each other. And we were able to figure out the x value where the y values would be equal, and then we use the x value to find the y value. All of that to say we algebraically found the x and the y, the point where those two lines intersect. You might be surprised to find that this watering can held two and two thirds cups of water. It looks to me that that one cup isn't that much smaller than that watering can. But remember, the spout, which is not quite a cylinder, that also held water. So it was two and two thirds cup water.
I went to water my house plants the other day and I was realizing that it matters to me how much water my little watering can holds because then it tells me how many plants I can water before I run out, how many times I'll have to fill this up. So if you take a look at this watering can here, I want you to figure out what is the capacity of this water can? How much volume of water does this can hold? Take a look at the shape of it. There's a cylinder for the main can. There's this little spout at the end. If I start to pour, I can see the water's right up to the edge of that spout. If I place it here, comparing it to something you do know, I will tell you that in this cup, almost full to the brim, there's eight ounces or one cup of water. So if this blue cup holds one cup of water, how many cups do you think this watering can holds? Because it's the last video, I wanna make sure you know where to go to get more practice, and we'll wrap up the exit ticket from last week. So in order to practice what we worked on today and in the other videos, you can reuse your Pearson workbook. You could go to pearsonrealize.com, and any Seattle school site is gonna have those packets, Math 8, Week 1, 2, 3, and 4, that correspond to each of these videos that we've made for Math 8. For the exit ticket for today, I'm not gonna give you a new one because again, it's our last video, but the one from last week was looking at linear and proportional relationships in all but number two. Number two is not linear and is not proportional because it's not a straight line across the entire domain. Number one is the only one that is a straight line and doesn't go through the origin. Number four was the only one that was a straight line that does go through the origin. So that is a proportional relationship. Number three was the only graph that is decreasing along the entire domain, the only one with negative slope. So those are some examples of things you could have noticed of which one doesn't belong. Take a look at the other videos on the SPS YouTube channel. Also check out other grade level videos on math. There's great things to learn, great things to review. Thanks for watching.